trombone. A trombone? Something like that. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. Show for it. Why am I holding a show for it? Rosh Hashanah is coming up, that's right. And then Rosh Hashanah is a mitzvah, it's a commandment in the Torah, the Jews. You blow the shofar, and we hear the shofar. But there is a custom that in the month uh, that we are currently in, the Hebrew month, which is Elul, which is the month leading up to Rosh Hashanah, it's a kind of preparation month. So by Jewish custom, we blow the shofar every day of Elul, every weekday, in preparation for Rosh Hashanah. And the way we blow it during the Elul is a little bit shorter than we do on Rosh Hashanah, so we're not going to do a whole service. You can relax. <laughs> you're not. We haven't held you off this for that. Um, just before we blow the shofar, just want to share with you a small story that illustrates or that helps us understand what the message mm -hmm. of this shofar is all about. It's not a true story, but it's a kind of tale that helps us understand what we're doing, what the significance is. So the story goes of a king and queen who had an only child, a prince, princess, whatever, one child. And of course, they gave this child the best possible education one can possibly have. Best music, art, languages, whatever, you name it. And of course, this kid, this prince, grew up in a bubble of the palace where everything was fantastic. Everything that he wanted, he got in a second. He had servants and people running around taking care of him. And one day, the prince gets old enough and the king comes to him and says, his parents come to him and say, you know, one day you are going to rule in our place. And you've been growing up in this little sheltered bubble and we want to expand your world. But we don't just want to send you out to the world to roam and do free. So what we want you to do is we want you to travel around the country and take all the amazing education that we've given you and share it with others who are less fortunate. We did not grow up in the kind of palace that you did. So the prince is very excited, goes off on his way, goes to the first town and uh, gets an assembly and wants to give a speech to tell the people about what kind of great education he got and what he can share with them. He starts to speak and he realizes very shortly that nobody understands a word he's saying. Because the language he speaks and the type of things he talks about in the palace are up here somewhere where the simple people who are doing whatever they're doing back in the old day don't really understand the language, they don't understand the kind of things he talks about. That's not their world. So he realizes that if he wants to get a message across to them, he's got to change the way he speaks to match the way they speak. And so he does. The next speech, he dumbs it down a little bit, speaks in a different kind of language, throws in a couple of slang words in there, hoping to get the crowd and engage with the people. That doesn't work either, because he realizes the way he dresses is a barrier, so he changes his clothing. You see where this is going over many years, and some time he forgets why he was sent there to begin with, and he just becomes a regular commoner, completely forgetting that he was a prince, forgetting the language that he spoke, and forgetting most of his education being somewhere in a distant memory, because throughout time, he kind of just felt lost in his mission and ended up blending in to the very culture, to the very place that he was supposed to transform and enlighten. One day, being a prince, of course, doesn't disappear completely, and one day, he overhears two guards, king's guards, walking down the street, and hears them speaking, and the language they speak reminds him of his childhood, and he runs over to them and says, I'm the prince, take me home! And of course they laugh at him and say, you're not the prince. But he begs and pleads, and they laugh and they, they go on their way. But he's determined now that he's reminded of who he really is, and goes back to the palace and starts pounding on the front door, let me in, let me in. And they open the door and of course they laugh him off and they don't assume that he's the prince, of course. Despondent, no hope, what does he start doing? He starts to cry, he starts to cry. And the whole commotion, the king comes to the front door, and the king doesn't need to be introduced to his child. He hears the cry and recognizes it. Every parent recognizes the cry of their own child. It takes two seconds, and when the king, the, the parents hear their child crying outside, they know exactly who it is and say, this is my, he's not lying, he's saying the truth, bring him in. And that is the story of the chauffeur. As Jews, we have a Jewish soul. And before we are born, our soul is up in heaven, in the king's palace. We're hanging out with God, it's all fantastic, it's all beautiful. And then God says, okay, it's time for you to go down to that world, go into a body, and I want you to bring the message of godliness to the world around you. That's the Jewish mission. We're chosen to be a light onto the nations. You've heard that. Tikkun Olam, which is what we're here, fixing the world, is because we're here on a mission. We've been given that godly soul, we're, we're princes, that's what we are. And we're here on a mission 
to bring that beautiful message to the rest of the world. But as it happens, the Jews gotta make a living, the Jews gotta do this, and sometimes we forget where we came from, we forget what we're all about, excuse me, and we forget what our mission is. And the call of the shofar is the Jews cry that says, I still remember who I am. Please God, we, can, we uh, welcome me into the palace and I'm recommitting to the mission that we were sent to, to begin with. So that's the story that illustrates what the shofar is all about. And now we're about to blow the shofar.